Homers consultant, Megan Hudson, representing BJU Press Homeschool. Today, we are going to take a look inside of the parent-led textbook kit for the fifth edition of K-5 Math. This is our kindergarten level math course, and it is a full year course with 180 days worth of lessons. So let's jump in and take a look at these books. These are the materials you would receive with your fifth edition K-5 Math textbook kit. You would receive your teacher edition books, your student work text, your student manipulative packet, and your homeschool visual packet. Each of these different materials has a role to play in teaching this course. So now let's jump in and see what each part does. This is the K-5 Math Teacher Edition book. There are two parts to this course, so this is part one. There are 24 chapters in K-5 Math, the first 12 chapters are in this teacher edition, and the other 12 chapters are in part two. So in chapter one, you're going to be talking about geometry. Chapter two will be classifying and comparing. Then you're going to go to numbers zero through five, followed by numbers six through ten. Chapter five will start you out in measurement, and then you'll have numbers 11 through 19, time, numbers to 39, addition to five, a chapter on the calendar, and then money and more addition. In part two, you'll see fractions, numbers to 100, subtraction to six, geometry, money, measurement, time, addition, and subtraction to 10. And then in chapter 21, we'll see the calendar again, followed by fractions, some reviewing of all the concepts we've done throughout the year, and chapter 24 will be for STEM projects. You'll find some information in the teacher edition book that you'll want to read through when you first get your TE. I'm going to skip ahead to the technology solutions page. So just a couple things to point out here. BJU Press has something called BJU Press Trove, Homeschool Hub, After School Help. These are three different websites. As homeschool moms, anytime I need course resources, I'm going to be going to the homeschool hub. Anytime I need extra practice for my kids to watch little videos or get extra practice on specific problems, I'm going to go to afterschoolhelp.com. I don't believe, though, there is anything for K5 on afterschoolhelp.com for math for kindergarten. If you see something for BJU Press Trove, that is for classroom teachers. All of your resources as a homeschool mom are going to be on the hub. So if you see something in the teacher edition book that says to go to the Trove, just remember as a homeschool mom, you're going to the homeschool hub. There's some more information that you're going to want to read through before you begin teaching this course. I'm going to highlight some of the resources you're going to have. So with this course, you're going to have a student work text. This is where your, your child will be doing their work each day. You'll also have a manipulatives packet that you'll be able to cut apart and then use those manipulatives each day for your lessons. Your teacher edition is going to be where you have all of your lessons for the day so that you can teach your child. There will be 180 lessons. This is going to be split between 176 lessons to teach something or to learn something and then your four STEM activities. You'll also have a visuals packet. This is going to be where you find all of your charts to show um, for your lessons that you're going to be teaching. And then another note here about the Trove. Uh, this will have some other activities, but remember as homeschool moms, we have that information on the Hub. So you'll want to get onto the Hub and make sure you load the course so you can look at the course resources there. This page shows the teacher edition features. We're going to be looking at this a little bit closer in a second when we're actually looking at a lesson. But if you don't remember where something is when you're teaching something, this cheat sheet here will help point you to the right direction. So with that, let's go ahead and jump ahead to a chapter that I've selected for us to look at. I picked chapter five, which is on measurement. And the first thing we see here is the lesson plan overview. These are the pages that I generally go to when I'm trying to plan my lesson for the next week. 
because I can quickly see which pages I'm going to be on in the student workbook and then I can see any of the instructional aids or visuals or any other materials I might need to get to be prepared for teaching the lesson the following week. Each chapter will start out a story. These stories will always be about Farmer Brown and Mrs. Brown and Cheddar and their adventures. It will introduce the new concept for this chapter. And you'll also have your chapter objectives for what you're gonna be learning about within this chapter. You'll also have your overall question. So the measurement chapter is, how does measuring help me learn about the world? Let's jump into a lesson. So here's lesson number 32. This box right here is gonna give me a lot of information. The work text pages that I'm going to be on with my child are gonna be listed there at the top. I'm also gonna have my objectives for the day and what we're gonna be learning about. I can see my biblical worldview shaping. So if you see the initials BWS listed in your book, that stands for biblical worldview shaping. And then I know that I have my instructional aids that I need to get out and my visual chart, followed by if there's a digital resource I need, which is on the hub, I can grab those as well. I also see for today I need a material of graham crackers and I have some preparation of what I would need to do with those graham crackers. So I could have all this ready to go before I teach my lesson. And then once I start teaching the lesson, I'm going to start by doing this practice and review. The practice and review will always review something you've done in a previous lesson, so it'll just be a quick refresher to remind your child what you've already talked about. Then I'm going to have some sort of engage. I would just read this to my child, and then after I've done that little engagement, I'm going to actually begin my instruction for the day. The instruct section is going to help me guide a discussion with my child so that I can teach the lesson for the day. As I'm teaching, I'm going to be paying attention to these bold words to make sure I'm staying on track with what I need to be doing. So this tells me I need to guide a discussion to teach larger and smaller. So I'm gonna explain that a baby cow is called a calf. And then I'm going to ask, do you think a calf is larger or smaller than its mother? And then we're gonna compare other objects or animals emphasizing the larger and smaller as we're making comparisons. I also see that I'm going to be using those instructional aids to identify larger and smaller objects. And these were the instructional aids I pulled out to begin teaching this lesson. I'm also gonna help with a visual analysis by using objects around the room, and I'm going to compare larger and smaller with those objects. I also see that I have a suggestion here for an activity to get my child moving. And then I have a classifying activity to help get things in order of size. After we're done with all of that teaching and guiding discussion for the day's uh, lesson, I'm going to then guide my child through our activity pages for that day. So I would have my child pull out their K-5 math work text and we would work through the examples together. If I needed more work for the day, I do have options for extended activity at the end of the lesson. So this is kind of how the lessons are laid out throughout this entire chapter and the entire book. At the end of each chapter, I have a chapter review. These will be a little bit different because there will be nothing new being taught in these lessons. And instead, I'm just going to review everything we've done in this entire chapter. And then again, we would complete our worksheets and we would make sure that we understand it. And if I need an extended activity, I do have that again for this lesson as well. After the review, we do have two more pages that are a cumulative review. So this will review concepts from previous chapters as well. Let's jump now to the instructional aids. So this is going to be a list of all the instructional aids for this course. The bright numbers are the instructional aids that you'll find in the part one, so this TE, part one, and the part two you'll find in the other part, part two, the TE. 
And here are some of the instructional aids you'll be able to have. There should also be a file in the course resources on the Homeschool Hub with the instructional aids. So if you need to make copies of that, you do have the option of either making a copy directly from this book or going to the Homeschool Hub and printing out what you need. I'm going to just go ahead and jump ahead some. Towards the back of the book, you'll have your appendices. So if you have songs that you are teaching your child, those are in the back. I'm gonna jump ahead to this teaching tip page. So the teaching tips will give you some ideas for how to schedule lessons. It will also give you some suggestions on how to teach using manipulatives. And it will also give some suggestions on how to make modifications for specific needs. There's also a page about manipulative alternatives. So if you have other manipulatives you would prefer to use rather than the manipulative packet, you do have the option to do that. And this page gives some suggestions for it. It also suggests a storage system and even a distribution system um, in case you need some suggestions for that. So this is called Math Background for the Teacher. This is for kindergarten through grade five. If you've ever been curious about why something is taught the way that it is, these would be great pages to read through. Sometimes it doesn't seem like there's a rhyme or reason for the way something is taught, but you'll figure out in the next grade level that it was taught because they're going to connect something with a new skill. So these sheets are great to reference back to if you're curious about why something's being taught a specific way. And then the very last thing is the index at the back of the teacher book. So that is the part one. Part two will look very similar. It will just be the second half of the year. This is the K-5 math work text. So this is the student book. This book does have a perforated edge, so you can tear these pages out pretty easily if you need to. And it just jumps right in to different worksheets that you're gonna be doing with your child. Again, this is all gonna be guided, so you're gonna be doing this with your child each day. I'm gonna go ahead and jump to chapter five because this is where we were looking in the teacher edition book. So here's that Farmer Brown and Mrs. Brown story with Cheddar that they're going to be looking at this page while you read that first engagement story to introduce the concept. And then it jumps into the worksheets. So let me give you an idea of what those look like. You might notice that on the back side, at the bottom of each page, there is a time to review. So that will review previous concepts you've done so far in the year. And then this was that review lesson at the end of the chapter, followed by the two pages, the one front and back, with the Cheddar's checkup at the end. So that will be the student work text. This is the math manipulative packet. So the first thing you're going to want to do is read through this preparation list and it will show you what each thing is. And then I would recommend tearing this apart and getting it all sorted out before you are ready to start teaching the lessons because then you can just grab what you need and start teaching. So lots of things to punch out.
So that is the manipulative packet. And this is the K5 Math Homeschool Visual. So this is going to be those charts that you're going to use for teaching. There is a contents list on the back of the very first card. These are cardstock. I would recommend either flipping through and then maybe getting a binder to put these into sheet protectors so they're there and ready when you need them. Or potentially look through and see if you can spiral bind down one side just to keep everything together. And I'm not showing you every card, but I'm giving you an idea of what these are going to look like. And some of these you might also notice are larger cards for something the student will have in their manipulative packet. So these are the visual charts. Thanks for joining me as we looked inside of the 5th edition of the K-5 Math. If you have any questions about the materials, please feel free to reach out to your local Homeworks by Precept consultant. We are happy to help. Have a great day!